So section 2.3 starts talking about time, velocity, and speed. First you talk about time. Now here again you have that delta. In our class we will make the same statements of simplicity as your book does. I will often use just T for delta T. Anytime you see T, I'm, I'm almost always talking about a change in time because I've just picked the initial time to be zero. Then you move on to velocity. Well, once again, this is a term that has a colloquial everyday definition and a precise physics definition. So that's worth paying attention to. This statement here is the definition of velocity written mathematically. So this is a key definition for this class expressed in a mathematical form. If you think back to the chapter one reading guide, I mentioned that physics is ideas that we happen to express mathematically. This equation here is the idea of velocity represented in a mathematical form. It's important for you to understand both the word definition given up here and the mathematical definition given here and understand how they connect to each other. Just like you can't really do chemistry without understanding what a molecule is, it's very hard to do physics if you don't understand what a velocity is. So you really need to internalize this particular definition. Make a point to try and understand how velocity can be negative and what that means. Here you have speed. Again, worth thinking about the difference between speed and velocity. There's differences in those definitions, and you should understand the differences between them. Another thing, going back, you see an average velocity and an instantaneous velocity. So an average velocity is when you are looking at averaging over some amount of time. So say you're driving down the highway, and you say you go... 60 miles in one hour, then your average velocity is 60 mph. You went 60 miles in one hour. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going 60 miles an hour every instant. Sometimes you might be going 65, sometimes you might be going 55. This is the idea of instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is what is your speedometer showing instant by instant? So this idea is your speedometer. And showing you what's going on instant by instant. Similarly for speed, you have an instantaneous speed and an average speed. Instantaneous speed is what's shown on your speedometer. Average speed is determined by doing a calculation like this one. You have starting to think about the ideal models. Remember in chapter one, I talked about we might sometimes model a person walking as, as just a dot because we don't care about how their hands are moving or the fact that they're blinking or their pulse or any of these types of things. If we only care about their motion, we can model them as a dot. This is a big idea in the discipline of physics, the idea of thinking about simple models of reality and then adding the complexity back. So. In this example, the model has a lot of assumptions. You're assuming that the speed is constant during the trip. Of course, this is unrealistic, but it makes the problem easier. And a lot of the time, you don't care. 
If you do care, you can go back and think about it later. Another one is you're assuming that the route is a perfectly straight line. Again, 100% realistic? No. But many roads over short distances are very close to straight. In fact, if you live out west, they're really straight. They're close enough to straight that a calculation you do with a straight road is going to be close enough to right to take into account the fact that the road bends. You'll be off a couple of percent, which is fine for a lot of applications. Also on page 38, you're starting to think about the idea of representing motion with a graph. So we've talked about the definitions of position and velocity in words, in equations, but you can also think about these ideas graphically. And if you're if you really got it in your head that physics is this collection of ideas, then you're expressing the same idea three different ways. It's always talking about velocity, but there are multiple ways of thinking about and expressing that idea. One of the big goals of the class is thinking about graphs and learning how to interpret a graph. This is a critical skill for anyone in a scientific or medical field. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time in this class thinking about different types of graphs. So read this section carefully and be sure to understand how we can represent velocity and position graphically. I think these making connections, taking home investigations are really a great idea and I would really encourage you to do them. Just This helps you integrate what you're learning about physics with your everyday world. You'll start to see the implications and the applications of physics all around you and that'll make the world A, just much richer and B, really enhance and give you a feel for the concepts of physics. So I'd really recommend you give these exercises a shot.